Hi everyone, Sonia here, and you're watching Coin with Sonia. Today I'm going to try using three very intensely colored um, paints. I love the counterculture DIY. These are intense colors. They're really just a, um, let's see if you can, yeah, focus in on that. These are really just intense colors intended to color resin. So it's really just a liquid dye. Um, I usually like to try and keep my my paints a little bit thicker so that they leave a little bit of a mound. And these are a little bit thinner because they're all just these watery intense dyes. I have amber spice, which is kind of this orangish brown. And then I have cranberry cocktail, which is this beautiful, deep, rich red. And then um, marmalade, which is this beautiful yellow. I keep wanting to call it um, marigold, but it's not. It's marmalade. And then I just mixed up some, I, I wish I had a better quality copper, but I just have Blacrylics copper paint. Um, that's just their student grade, and it's just the metallic copper. And that I mix up with Australian Floetrol to create the cell activator. I'm thinking like mums, fall mums, chrysanthemums, and those are the colors I'm thinking of for that. Um, I thought I would try these. Let me show you the um, consistency of these. A little bit thinner than I usually like, but not terrible. Um, so they're leaving a little mound. So I like to have that mound to go a little bit, you know, last a little bit longer. But they're not terribly thin. But it could give me trouble. We'll see. So let's just... I did one first, you can see some of the colors, with just yellow and red, and I was hoping that they would combine and make some kind of an orange. They didn't, so I mixed up that amber spice, and let's see if I can, I think I'll do the amber first, then the yellow, then the red, and then the copper. So, let's see what we get. It looks kind of brown at first, but I, I do think it turns a little bit orange, so. Should lend itself well to this color palette. Okay, next to that I'll do some yellow. Followed up by this beautiful red really deep, almost a burgundy. And then the copper cell activator. This is what I'm unsure of. I'm not sure if I want, there. I don't even know if I'm getting enough contrast. I don't know, I think, I think I might just do some white. Let's see what we get with the white. Sorry, I'm changing on the fly here. We got some white cell activator here. And I'll put in two scoops of that, and it always likes to drop to the bottom, this cell activator with the Aussie Fotol. And now we wait. <laughs> we wait for that a middle to kind of come back together. So it's getting close. I want the middle to move. I can still see a little bit of the indent there. You know, and with this technique as with everything else, the better your bloom that you blow, the better your end result. So this all looks really pretty great, but I've got a little bit of a weird patch here. Nah, what are you going to do? If you're happy with 75% of your painting, you keep it. And you don't futz with it. Because <laughs> you'll probably end up messing up the rest of it. Let's see. I don't know. I think I like my just plain yellow and red better. That's what I think. Let's do this one more time. Okay. 
that's just making the more and more the white come through. It's not really doing what I'd hoped. All right. I think I might go back to... Hmm. What do you think? I'm not sure. Maybe I will try a black cell activator. Um, and this time put yellow on the bottom. Because I really liked that yellow vivid brightness. This all the colors, the order you put them down, really, really matter. The one you put on the bottom, believe it or not, that one and the top one usually are the stars of the show. And the ones in the middle just kind of get a little bit lost. So let's try this with yellow. And then this Amber Spice. Then my Cranberry. And then let's try black and see what happens with that. That can sit there for a second. And I got some black CA mixed up over here. Let's get a little stick here. And let's see what we get with that. <laughs> you really like the black CA. It's so dramatic. It definitely, uh, the red kind of gets lost in with that black CA. So maybe I'll do yellow, red, amber, and then black on the next one. And we'll see what happens. Middle's not quite moving yet. Looks like it's just about moving now, so. It's pretty dramatic. It's pretty neat. One more spin, I think, to just kind of tip it over the edges a little. Oh my gosh, yes, I like that. I like that a lot. That's what I'm going to do. I like that yellow on the bottom. Um, I'm not sure if the red or the amber should go on top, but I think that's pretty nice looking, so I'm going to just do a bunch of those. That's what I think I'm going to do. Just wiping off the bottom, and let's go from there. For sure, I'm going to need one more tile, so there we go. And we'll pour this out. So now that I know what I'm doing, let's do yellow. Um, what is that? <laughs> a big, big, huge clunk. So good. If you see something in your 
paint that doesn't like look normal investigate <laughs> so I got my yellow my amber spice my cranberry could try and get that a little bit more on the outside we'll just see what that does if anything and the black I got some weird thing happening there, but that's okay. Could turn out looking just fine when I spin it out. A little brown in there. I'm really happy with the way the one over there looks, the one I just did. Not quite ready yet it's not quite woven and just by tilting it I'm hoping that the weight of this paint will swoop up under it and just help it move a little faster I got like a little a little red heart there <laughs> let's spin it So my brown spot, definitely. Let me see if I can tilt a little bit of that. Because that's a shame. I don't mind the white underneath as long as some of the lacing went there, but the lacing didn't go there. So I want to try and tilt some of that off. And then spin it again a little bit. So I don't have quite so much without... I know I've got a little piece of tape on the bottom of this, but I better support it a little bit. <laughs> okay. So now, let's see what happens. Tilt this back a little bit. And then spin it. Okay, I'm down with that. That looks better, I think, than the original one did. Looks kind of cool, actually. But the spinning just helps with the distortion from the tilting, I think. Just helps it kind of... Cool, cool, cool. Uh-oh. Jeez, I can't believe I just did that. Can you believe I just did that? I can't believe I just did that. I don't think there's any way I'm getting that back out over that corner either. I'm not. So. Don't think there's any way I can fix that, but I can sure give it a try. I mean, I don't think picking up any of this is going to really help. So, 
it's better than being solid white because I have a little bit of a brown here, so I don't mind a little bit of a brown there. And then kind of pretty, kind of cool. Yes. <clears throat> I am going to need one more cup of there to set my extra time on. These tiles are a great way to just do some little test pieces on the color palettes you like or want to try. Cell activators, like I tried a copper cell activator first and I didn't really like it with these colors. Maybe with some greens or something else, I don't know, but I didn't really care for it with this. It was too similar. It wasn't enough of a contrast to these colors and I wanted something to contrast. I tried white and it just kind of made the red a little subdued, a little pinkish. So that's why I ended up with the black. And I do like it with the black. Nice little contrast. All right, let's see if I can not mess up this blow. I still have a little bit of a brown spot there, which I'm not super happy about, but, and that's basically just where I blew, I guess, a little too hard and got down to the white underneath. And really all you're trying to do when you blow this out is get those colors. You want the cell activator to skim across the colors and the colors to skim across the pillow. So I find if you go down too deep, You'll get some of this here, this discolored, not, you get some of the white. And sometimes the white's really pretty, as long as it's got the lacing in it. I just have that little kind of patch, but it is close to the edge, so maybe it'll go right off. Kind of give it a hard flick there. Didn't quite go off. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty though. I'm just going to leave it. I don't think I want to... I don't think you want to mess with it at all. I think I like it just like that. Okay, so let's see if I can't get this off a little easier than last time where I ruined the corner. Okay, live and learn. So there's that one. I'm just wiping across the bottom before I <laughs> take it a walk across my carpeted floor. these definitely give me the um, chrysanthemum vibe which is what I was going for so I'm happy about that last one oops I don't want that to drip down there and I would have a little rather have a little too much pillow paint than not enough pillow paint My tile just fell off my cup, so I had to rescue it. Okay, good grief. We don't want that happening. Okay, so yellow. I probably will not post this because this is just taking way too long <laughs> to make four coasters. And decide what I like, what I don't, 
So all the, I guess all the little mistakes, the trial and error process, it's all worth seeing, right? Okay, and now the black. Let's try and get that out a little bit. And blow. Just leave it at that, I guess. I blew a few, a little more across that, and I'm happy. I think I'll leave that as is. I don't mind having some blank space, and it's kind of near the edge anyway, so it's probably going to tilt some of that off, or spin some of that off. It's already moving pretty well. I must not have blown down too hard in the middle. Kind of a weird composition. I would like to have it come back this way a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's it. So I'm just going to tilt it a little. And try and stretch some of that color down there. And then I will spin it again just to try and kind of. Even that out a little. <laughs> it's pretty cool looking. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's that one. And I will take you over so you can look at my trial and error batches. And the final four I ended up with kind of going for that chrysanthemum vibe. Okay. Gloves are off. Let's have you come take a look. So, the very first one I did was just yellow and red with a copper cell activator. And although it's pretty, I didn't feel like the copper gave me enough of a contrast. Um, I was hoping also that the red and yellow would make more of a orangey color. So, I mixed up some amber spice that kind of brownish orange color and used a white cell activator but the white cell activator really diluted that um, red and made it very pink and I don't I didn't want that either so then I did the yellow the brown and the red with black and holy cow look what I got with that that is the dramatic beauty that I was looking for. So there are the four. Oh, let me move this out. Wait, there we go. But I did. Um, and I would, I'm pretty happy with those. I would love to see that and put my glasses on those anytime. I wanted to have something to drink. It would just make me happy. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, just kind of, you know, all the steps you go through the trial and error of finding the palette and the look that you're looking for. Uh, a copper cell activator with just yellow and red. Added the amber spice, so I've got a little bit of that orangish color going on, but the red became way too diluted. I didn't like that as much. 
So, uh, and plus I think I did the copper first on that one, hoping that it would become yellow. I did copper, yellow, red. And then I went back to yellow, amber, red, and black and ended up with those and really like it. Really like those colors and they make me happy. <laughs> so hope you had fun watching this and until I see you again, have fun painting everyone. Bye.